All right, welcome to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I've been doing quite a few shorts, and now I am I am making sure it's recording. It is recording. Yes, it is recording. Good. So I decided to do a full game for you. Now, uh, David Janowski was known for his bishops, right, early on, later on in his career. This game he played in 1896. Let's take a look. At Janowski's play, this is amazing. He does a queen gambit, and the queen gambit is accepted. And so how is he going to handle this? Easy. He's going to pull out the knight. Now, this is just standard stuff, right? Knight f6, and then his opponent bumps the c5. So he's got double pawns, but they're not blockaded, and they're on the march. So technically not a weakness. Janowski sums up his center pawn, and yet doesn't matter because the center pawn is taken anyway, and he exchanges the pawn here. So what have we got going on? Well, his opponent brings up something too early. He goes ahead and bops the bishop out there, right? Now, technically, as a rule, you need to bring your knights out first. And, of course, every rule is meant to be broken. But this really is a little bit too early. And the reason why Janowski is going to show you why is because now he takes the pawn, developing a piece with tempo, eliminating a central pawn, and now notice the board. Notice what's happening. Now, Gotham Chess is big on this, too, if you watch Gotham Chess. Eric Rosen has talked about this. Ben Feingold in the St. Louis Chess Club has talked about this. They're all talking. ASRM Chess, I believe, is the name of the channel. They talk about this. When you have more pieces developed, then you can begin to look for ways to attack, to get into your opponent's area. Move forward is the common goal, right? Well, he has to, he's still developing pawns, but this isn't bad because he's opening up for his bishop, but neither one of his knights are out yet. Now watch how Janowski handles this. Queen a4 with tempo, checking the king. Three pieces, a one and a two and a three a isn't math grand to his opponent's one. So the attack, and it does involve the most powerful piece, and it does involve a relatively open board with a long piece, although it shut down for the moment. But then we've got a short piece here who's going to play a major role. Now observe something else here real quick. Janowski brought his queen up with tempo checking the king. What this does is it eliminates the pin on the knight here. So the bishop is misplaced. He's literally doing nothing. And now he has to pay attention to the king. So this attack could be tough. Knight c6 to block the check. He does develop a knight finally. But now here's the thing. <laughs> You have three pieces out there. So when you pin a piece to the king or to the queen, or if you pin a lesser value piece to a rook, the next thing to do is attack that piece. This is what he's doing. He can do that because there's nothing here now. That bishop is a complete waste of time. And this is important to notice why Janowski's attack survives here. Actually succeeds, I should say, instead of survive. So knight e5, the queen is going to come up here and take the central pawn. Okay, now he's bringing in pieces. Now he's got three pieces. One of them is pinned. But remember, the pinned piece is attacked, and when you attack that pinned piece, by all means, go ahead and go for it. Now, the nice thing is you're tickling the queen here, right? So you got this. Watch what he does, though. Nice. 
kind of a cool little fork. Check. He's forking this and he's forking this, but this and this is protected. However, this is being attacked twice. It's only being protected once, so the knight's not going to make it. This poor horse gets to go to pasture, is what I'm telling you. However, now that Black's in check, what's he do? Again, he's able to develop another piece with tempo, right? This is very cool. And, of course, the knight does fall. We expect that. Janowski expected that. What do you do in that case? Well, get your other knight into the game. Niftily enough, you're tickling the queen who has to move yet again. So we've seen a queen move. We've seen a queen move again. And now we get to see a queen move again. But the last two times that queen had to move, it was because pieces came out. So now there are four pieces to two. That means, seriously, twice the power in the field ready to attack black. That makes a significant difference. I'm going to emphasize that because I just took a chess lesson earlier and it mentioned that. So this was a beautiful illustrative game of that concept. Bring your knight out, tickle the queen. Ah. Have you seen the weakness in white? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ta-da! Take the G2 pawn. And now, what are you going to do? Now, look, let's be real. Your rook is in danger. Um, wait. Both of your rooks are in danger here. Janowski has developed his pieces so speedily that now he might lose both his rooks. Very interesting play. What do you do to save your rooks? You find a better move. I've told you before. I've told you lots of times. A lot of the YouTube commentators are out there telling you. Don't just react to what your opponent is doing. You don't have to react to every move that your opponent is doing. In this case, ignore that sweet old granny lady because she ain't doing spit. That's not even a threat. There's something way better way better than worrying about saving your rook. And you go, well, now, wait a minute. Way better? Yes, way better. Because, because there's a logical development here that makes sense why to not worry about this. And yes, both rooks are powerful pieces. I'm with you 100%. But you have four pieces out in the field, and three of them are long-range pieces. Look, what else is there? And you go, no, come on, come on. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's stupid. That doesn't get a thing done. In fact, you're throwing your bishop away. Not only did you just throw your bishop away, you clown, you're going to lose both your rooks. What kind of chess is this? That move got him two exclamation points. Two of them. That is a sensational move. And let's see the logic with it. Number one. He takes it with the pawn instead of the queen because of the knight. This pawn is pinned. The power of the pin. He's forced to take it with the pawn. This is a bishop sacrifice, right? Beautifully played. Now. 
you can go check with a fork of your own. Fantastic because he's got more pieces coordinating together than he does. And the field is wide, love, and open, baby. King D8, absolutely. Take that rook check. Fundamentally so. King D7, come on up with him. Dance with him. Check again. King is going to try to escape into the nether regions of the chess world. And he ain't gonna make it. Why? Because watch. Queen C6, check. However, however, there's always a however, right? Now he can develop the bishop with tempo, blocking the check. And now Janowski has to think about it. What would you do? Now is it time? Notice. Notice, his rook's been in prize now for several moves. Now is it time to save your rooks, right? Nope. There's still something better. <laughs> and, and this is tough to do if you're in the game, you know. I don't want to lose both my rooks, man. Right? Bishop f4. One more time, it's a repeat process that we're seeing Janowski do. He pins a piece, then he attacks it. So now he is going to attack that bishop next. And it is here that black actually resigns. And you go, now, wait a minute. Just hold on, Mr. Professor, sir. Hold on. What happens if he takes check? Just watch how black regains the power, right? So king to queen two, and he comes over here, and he zaps the entire backside of the most some of the most powerful pieces in the army. What are you going to do then? But notice, now that he's taken the second rook, Janowski has next move. So, you take the bishop, check. Then the king goes to here. And you go to here, check. And uh, the king goes here. And then you go El Achecmeto. Gotcha. It's better to continue and carry on your attack when you are better developed than worrying so much about making a less powerful more passive moves like worrying about saving your rooks. So, yeah, he lost both rooks, but so what? He won the game. That's a great lesson to learn. And the way he won it was with many different pins. Yeah, he had that knight pinned. He had the bishop pinned. And once he pinned a piece, then he attacked that pinned piece. That's what you do with the chess. So there's a wonderful, wonderful game for you from 1896. So don't think that the old chess games doesn't have anything to offer us. Oh, yes, they do. This is one of the best examples. So there is your chess video. I love doing these things. I'm on a roll with the shorts, as well as I'm trying to kick out more videos as I have time. And be, remember, do well, be good, have fun, and seriously, make friends. The world's a much funner place to live in with friends. I, I promise. I've been around the block. I may be an old duffer, but I know a thing or two. And that's one thing I do know. And I encourage you to pursue that friendship.
marvelous. All right. I will catch you in the next Backyard Professor Chess video. Keep watching for the shorts. Those are coming out like crazy. I love this.